The question is, are you thinking about getting into real estate? Have you been thinking about it? What is stopping you and why do you want to get into real estate? Because there is an NFL league that if you work the systems and the processes, you will quickly be recruited into the Hall of Fame. There is space for a new talent. There are people leaving the real estate industry every single day right now, choosing not to renew their license because of the upcoming pending changes in the industry with the NAR lawsuit settlement and with just how tough this economy has been on the recent market. So if you've been thinking about it, this is the episode for you. The first thing that you need to figure out is what is your why? Because I will tell you that statistically over 80% of people that get their real estate license fail before their fifth year of business, before it's time to renew for the second time. Over half of agents may not renew their real estate license for even the first time with how tough this economy has been on our housing market. When we think back on four years ago, just four years ago, when gas was over a dollar less a gallon, groceries were less, almost 50 to 100% on many products. And interest rates were in the 2%. I wish I could have told more people. But did you know that it is possible to go broke while selling real estate? Well, you go broke in the trying until it actually sells. It can break you, especially if you take on more business than you can handle. The reason you need to think about your why is you have got to have something that drives you enough to study the industry so that you don't become one of those statistics, so that you succeed, so that you don't go broke like I have, like people that I have worked with have while trying to build big businesses. It is preventable, it can be fun, it can be done right, you can make money, you can get clients, and you can get started today. I'd love to invite you to reach out to me for an opportunity to get your licensing courses at no cost to you. All you have to pay for is the test when you take them. Doesn't that seem like a great opportunity? It is offered through Keller Williams Realty. You don't even have to choose to sign up with Keller Williams as your brokerage. In order to get access to these courses, you just need to be sponsored. I'd be happy to sponsor you. I'd be happy to mentor you. I'd be happy to share with you all of the things personally, one-on-one. -on -one. We can have a real conversation or you can continue to uh, listen to the content as it comes out. I have personally chosen Keller Williams Realty as my brokerage. It is who I first started my real estate license career with. I was with Keller Williams for just over four years, and then I tried to venture out. And the reason that I left was to no fault of Keller Williams and to every fault of me, um, not knowing what to do and not taking the time to use the resources that other agents have put out there, not read all of the books, not listen to the podcast. In real estate, you have always got to be learning. Always be learning. <laughs> I think that that's like a motto, always be learning. Your business grows to the extent that you do. That's a bold law. I think I needed that drilled. I get why people go to bold all um, over and over again. Sometimes in Keller Williams, you're going to hear, I'm eight times bold. I'm three times bold. I would just like you to know I am one times bold. And bold is a mindset and business training course that Keller Williams 
offers and has offered for decades now. It was written originally by Diana Kokoska, although because I have not taken this new version of it, I don't know who the authors of the updated version are, and I don't want to miss giving credit to people. But I would like to give a huge shout out to Diana Kokoska. If you haven't looked into who she is, one of the things that you should do is learn who the who's who are in real estate. One of the best lessons that I learned, and you're going to hear that because there's a lot of best lessons and some like um, throwaway lessons, you know, maybe what year was something passed. I don't know, but I do know that it was passed and that's the law and that's what we're doing and that's how it is. I'm good with that. Repeat and duplicate. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. You find the professionals that are finding success and you implement their business model and you customize it for you. That does not mean that you watch Selling Sunset or Million Dollar Listing and think you know the processes because it is intensive. And I will give a thorough series on year one, year two, year three, year four, and my lessons that I learned in each. So learn as you go, and then we'll do hyper-focused videos as well. We're going to be pumping out some content, so I hope you're excited to learn. Um, you should be getting some quality information to help make your decision a much easier one. While many will tell you, oh, I got into real estate so I could set my own schedule or I want to get into real estate because I can set my own schedule, that is not always the case. You can run a business that is, I'm not going to do showings on the weekends, but then you're going to miss out on the clients that want showings on the weekends or you have to build a business that has agents that can show houses for you on the weekends and you have to work with clients that are okay with you not showing them the house but being involved in the transaction and learn how to navigate that. Some agents don't answer their phones after five. You just have to work with clients that are okay with you not answering the phone after five. Or you have to have the resources and the team in place that can pick up the phone for you after five so that your clients are serviced after five and that your clients are okay with being serviced by someone else after five and that you have set the precedence that you're still going to be involved in the transaction. In real estate, Keller Williams teaches you that you can live a life by design, not by default. So if you are setting your goals, I was going to say if you have goals, and then I was going to say if you're setting your goals and it all wants to come out at one time. If you have a goal of not working on the weekends, and not answering your phone after five o'clock, then you're gonna need to build out the systems that allow you to do that, or you need to join a team and get into a role that allows you to do that. There are so many opportunities within the real estate industry if you have a real estate license to make money off of sales without being necessarily the realtor on point, the realtor that's meeting with the clients, real estate assistants, when they have a license, they can make a very healthy income into the six figures when you're helping to promote a mega agent, an agent that will get in front of the clients, that will take on the showings, or that can recruit the agents in the volume needed to take on the clients to, that will lead to closings that validates your salary. You can get into staging and have a real estate license. And then when you're doing staging for different businesses or different photo shoots or you're a photographer and you meet different different people. <laughs> Y'all, I did do speech therapy for four years. So if I slip sometimes, just know it's natural. And I work really hard to articulate as well as I do, especially with um, nerve damage that is visible across my chin from when um, I had my wisdom teeth removed. It like, there's like a line there that's like indented where it's like pulled back. So I apologize for any speech flaws.
when you meet clients out and about that want to buy and sell real estate and you hold a real estate license, but your schedule does not allow for you to be the realtor on point that helps them, did you know that you can make like 20 to 50% commission sending that name, number, an email address with a brief description of the wants and the the desires and you give that to another agent and then they take the baton and they run with it and they get that client to closing and then you get a check in the mail. You didn't have to go to closing. Now, if you're close to them, why not? More the merrier. You can be the one taking the pictures. You can be the one that preps the champagne bottle. You can be the one that goes and delivers the gifts. You can help out. The more you work on a transaction, the more commission you can negotiate in your split. If you just need the other agent to go do showings for you, you can actually do everything else virtually, talk with them, meet with them when it's convenient. You could pay someone else 25, 20%, 10% to go do showings, depending on the volume and your relationship with them and what you negotiate. Everything is negotiable, which is an interesting topic given the most recent NAR lawsuit. One thing that I love about Keller Williams also is their investment into the company and into the agents that are under their brokerage. This time around, they ne- they invested in great legal counsel who was able to negotiate a settlement that provides even more protection for Keller Williams real estate agents than any other agents that are just simply relying on the NAR settlement that covers realtors across the board. Once you know your why, get with an experienced realtor like myself and let's talk through the real estate industry. In order to create a life by design and not by default, the quickest way to get that design is to get one-on-one with a coach. You can listen to podcasts, but you're listening to someone speak to you. No one's listening to you when you just take in content. A coach will listen to you. And then we design a plan for you based off of you, your needs, your wants, something that's not generic. Your why will be the thing that gets you up and out of bed in the morning that gets you dressed and ready for the camera, that gets you in front of the camera, that gets you on the phone, that gets you in the computer, and that gets you out and about in your community. Your why will drive you to riches. So you've got to figure out what that why is because if you just think it's something and then that's not actually your why, you're not going to find yourself driven. So set, set the goal. Make a plan, and then you can make a lot of money. And you can help a lot of people make a lot of money through buying and selling real estate because 90% of millionaires became so through real estate, but they did not become so through just buying and holding and never selling. You have to sell off parts of your portfolio. You buy more. You buy until you can buy a house that you don't have to sell if you love your house so much, but you got to keep buying and selling because you can make a lot of money. Otherwise, you know, are we saving up on our single incomes alone? No, the goal is to get six to seven streams of income. Make sure real estate is one of yours. It has proven to be decade over decade the best hedge of protection against the rate of inflation. There are homeowners that have made 30 to 50% of their of their home's value back in equity over the last four years. Now, the same cannot necessarily be true for everyone who bought homes at the peak of the market in 2021. I know many experts say that housing prices are going to continue to rise, but they are speaking on a general overall level and not for every market. And I am here in Galveston and that is not necessarily our situation. The primary market is not, 
anything like the secondary market. And I primarily work the secondary market and that has been a life lesson of mine is that, hey guys, when the economy is getting bad, people maybe aren't always spending money on luxury items. And even though you can find 50 people that wanna sell their properties, it doesn't mean you can find 50 people to buy them, unfortunately. And so homes here, when we moved back to the island in October, it felt like the market just froze on us. I swear I I ran comps for a listing where the average days on market was 42 and there were healthy numbers in houses that were closing in under 30 days and then in the 60 to 90 day range. And now we're up ticking towards 300 days on the market with almost with over a hundred thousand dollars in price reductions and we still can't even get showings. The second home market has just completely turned around in the last year. And there are neighborhoods where the home values have decreased 10 to 18% year over year from the 2021 sales prices. But then you have some owners who are listing their homes 200,000 to 2 million, almost $2 million more this year then they bought it for towards the peaks of the market in 2021 and 2022. I mean, it just absolutely blows my mind. But because all of my eggs are in the second home industry here, I won't say it's the second home market because you could live on this island. You can live and work on the island. I grew up here. It just so happens to be that our market took a big hit because of investments and short-term rentals. And I'll get into all of that, but oh boy, if you don't know your why, you won't be driven to learn all of the things that you need to learn to avoid the mistakes that will cost you like they've cost me. I should have had more business, more efforts going on in the primary market on the mainland and I would have been just fine because there are still houses that are getting multiple offers. They're just not here. Well, I mean some of them, but you know, they're not, not mine so far. I've gotten multiple offers over the span on a couple of houses, but not on one house all in one day from like the first day, first weekend on the market. It hasn't been like that. You have two options when getting your real estate license. You can go in person to classes. Some people need that. They need to be around other people that are learning. They need to have someone that is right in front of them that they can go and talk to before class or after class or call or email that knows them, that's familiar, that can teach them the content that's needed. There are six classes for the state of Texas real estate license exam. They are 30 hours each. Typically when you do classes online, there's a timer. So the state will see like how much time or the class program will see how much time you spent on that course. I believe the minimum requirement most of the time is 30 hours. So you'll find programs that won't even let you like go to the next page, even if you've read it until the timer runs out on that page. There are classes that are available from like 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Where, you, where you're in class all day learning the material, or there are classes where it's select evenings or days during the week. And then you're gonna learn the material, you know, more spread out. When you choose the online route, like I did, it's very much learn as you go and it's at your own pace, just not faster than the timer. I started um, my licensing courses in mid -sep no late September of 2018, and I finished my courses in six weeks, but it was my full-time job. I wasn't working at the time. I don't always retain what I read. I was like that in school as well because I have a, an astigmatism. And so the lines would like double up and kind of, um, you know, go crossways. So I would reread things. So I'm not saying it's going to take you six weeks, but that's just how long it took me doing it online. I think there are in person courses that are about six weeks as well. Hopefully you know yourself by now and you know which way of learning style is going to be best for you. And then the next thing you need to do is Google the highest success rates for passing for courses for passing the real estate licensing exam in your area, your state. 
This is a metric. So you'll see there are schools that have a 95% success rate, which means that 95% of the students that take their courses pass the real estate exam. Did you know that on the national average, less than 70% of people pass the real estate exam the first time? And you get three times to try the test and then you have to retake all of your courses again, which do cost money unless you can find an opportunity like what we offer with Keller Williams Realty, where you get your licensing courses at no cost to you and you just pay for your test. Your next step is to talk to a realtor that is successful in your area. You can text them. I promise you they'd love to connect with you. They'd love to mentor you. If I would recommend reaching out to a top producing Keller Williams agent because then you can learn about how the Keller Williams office is performing in your area if you're not here because you can always reach out to me. But you can also reach out to mega agents in other brands, right? You should always learn. There's no harm in reaching out to the other brands. Um, I just think that the Keller Williams real estate courses at no cost is a great opportunity. So if you're going to go that route, you would reach out to a top producing agent within that brokerage. Ask them questions about the market and some of the things that they think that you should know if you're planning on getting into real estate. Before you call them, look at their social media, check out their website, because when you choose to invest your time into learning more about pe people, they will invest their time in learning more about you. And I promise you a top producing realtor's time is very valuable. If they are producing at a high level, they are making a lot of money. There are million dollar real estate agents that are making over a million dollars a year. And so that dollar per hour is high. So it's worth taking the time, kind of like if they presented you their resume, because they are, their resume is available. You look up your local MLS, you type in their name under find agent. You can go to homes.com and look up their um, agent profile. You can look them up on Google. You can look them up on social. You can see if they're on YouTube and TikTok. Do some research because this is a field that you're wanting to get into. And it's a skill set, so it you got to stay sharp. And it's also an art, so you're going to have to practice. <laughs> you should be feeling pretty good after that conversation. So then the next step is, and if you're taking notes, that's smart. And if you're just making mental notes, that's cool too because you can come back. So this would be step number three. Is figure out which brokerage best aligns with your needs and your culture. And I don't mean necessarily like just culture within um, our heritage, but I mean culture as in how do you like to work with people? What systems and processes do you need? Do you like? Do you bring to the table? What type of leadership roles are you looking to be able to pull from? How much money are you looking to spend? One thing that I didn't know was anything about brokerages when I got my real estate license. Now, thankfully, one of my best friends and the one of the two first people that I ever met when I moved to Galveston was a licensed real estate agent when I was ready to get into real estate. And she had joined Keller Williams and loved it. And so she recommended that I join Keller Williams. So I am in her downline. There are brokerages that offer profit share opportunities there where the more people you bring into the industry, the more you can like make a percentage of like a little, not a percentage is like a little percentage. You can make like some dollars off of their deals. If you align yourself with a brokerage that has profit share, you, when they sell something that month and that market center is profitable, then they share out the profits to the people that are right, well, who belong to the people who uh, has that person in their downline. 
sorry. Practicing real estate is not free. There will be a cost to joining any brokerage. You may be charged a flat fee for every deal that you do. You may be charged a percentage for every deal that you do. You may be charged a percentage of every deal that you do up to a certain dollar amount. When there is a dollar amount limit, that's called a cap. So, like there's like a cap. That's what we call it in the real estate industry. The cap is $20,000. So then you would pay your percentage, whatever it is that your brokerage is offering and that you negotiate for. We're going to take that percentage out of every commission check. Plus, I'm sure there's transaction fees or, or admin fees or errors and omissions, errors and omissions fees. That all comes out of your commissions as well. And they're going to take that up until it reaches $20,000. The beautiful thing about those systems is once you reach that $20,000, then you get to keep the rest of your commission except for the fees because there is a cost to doing business. There's a lot of paperwork and contracts in real estate. They have to be processed. They are backed by a licensed broker. They're backed by usually a, a compliance real estate attorney that reviews the documents. I mean, there's a whole system once the contract is done on the backside. It's not just click on some DocuSign, you've got to submit that over in an organized format. A compliance attorney is going to review over your contracts to make sure everything is filled out correctly so that the brokerage is protected. Because just so that you're aware, if you weren't already, every real estate relationship, once you sign contracts, is actually between the client and the broker. You just represent the broker or the brokerage. And so the compliance attorney has to make sure that the work that you've done is up to the standards that that brokerage requires. And it's real interesting because the standards at all the brokerages are not the same. There are brokerages where agents love that they barely have to turn in any documents. Now, if there are issues in those situations when the right addendas are not filled out, could your risk factors be up on getting sued? Potentially, I don't know. Thankfully, I haven't gotten there. But when I started in real estate, they always told me it's not about if you get sued, it's about when <laughs> you get sued and being prepared for when you do, which means keeping all of your communications with every single client for four years or whatever the statute of limitations is in your state and you need to get familiar with it. You need to educate yourself about the legal risks that are associated with practicing real estate. It's like practicing medicine. You see people lose their license regularly, right? You see people get sued for malpractice. This is a practice. You practice real estate. You will not know everything about real estate. You won't even know everything about closing a deal unless you listen to a bunch of podcasts and read a lot of books before you finish your licensing exam. Most people don't do that. They just think, I'm going to get my real estate license. And then they take the courses and then they're like, okay, I'm ready to practice. And then you find yourself not knowing how to go out and get the business or handle the business once it's there. You just understand the fundamental concepts of real estate. <laughs> But not always the fundamental concepts of practicing real estate. Some of them, definitely not all of them. Which is why when you first sign on to brokerages, they're also going to let you know about any training that is somehow required, even though you're self-employed or training that is available. I think that it is fair. I don't know if it's legal. That's not that's outside of my realm. But I think it's fair for a brokerage to expect you to complete training courses before they risk their license or risk legal mitigation because of your mess ups because you just decided to go out there and do the thing, you know, <laughs> they don't know what you know. So they're going to offer training classes that make sure that you have the information that they think that you need to know. 
but also they're only available certain hours of the days. So you got to make sure that you spend, I recommend an hour every day, at least starting out an hour every day, educating yourself. Now, the beautiful thing about podcasts is you, you should be setting this up. You should be working. You should be doing something while you're listening to this. Unless my voice is super calming and you're going to go to bed or you're going to sleep with this so that you're learning it subconsciously. I hope that you're working right now. And that's what you would do is while you're working on your business or um, doing emails or creating your social media or anything that you find while you're doing the dishes, while you're cooking dinner, you know, listen to some music, get your pep up. And then educate yourself. Do something that helps you learn more about the industry that you're wanting to get into. That's 30 minutes on the first three things that I think that you should do when you're considering getting your real estate license. You should absolutely figure out what your why is. You should absolutely have a one-on-one conversation with a top producing realtor in your area. And you've got to think through what which brokerage you want to partner with and what you want out of that brokerage do you want somebody who's going to pay for all of your listing signs all of your photography who's going to offer mentoring who's going to offer training classes who's going to offer marketing collateral who's going to promote you on their social media who's going to post about your listings how much do you need from a brokerage and can it be done on a team And does a team like that exist within that brokerage? You've got to make sure that whoever you choose to hang your license with provides you the support that you need so that you can have a successful career. I hope you're well. I hope this was helpful. If you need anything, feel free to reach out. And I'll be talking to you very soon.